Hey guys, how are you doing? This is Zed from Zed Outdoors. I hope you're having an awesome day. So, I am with Lee Stoffer again. Lee, how are you doing? Good to see you again, Zed. Thank Excellent you very much. Excellent stuff, man. He thinks I'm stalking him now. <laughs> so, he might have time for restraining all that comes out. So, if you haven't seen this already, recently done a video with Lee, who's an accomplished craftsman, a green woodworker, based in Milton Keynes, which is not too far outside London. And it was about how to carve a spoon. Now, Lee, very kindly, is kind of guiding me, coaching me on my woodworking skills, my, my, my kind of uh, tool handling, my spoon carving and so forth. Um, and we've done a, a very well received video on how to carve a spoon. Yeah, Indeed. It's very well received. I learned a lot making that. Um, and everyone has their own kind of spin and technique on how to do it. Now those of you who've been following me for a while know that obviously I focus on three main areas uh, on my channel. One is bushcraft, one is natural crafts and the other is homesteading. And in terms of the bushcraft, obviously last year, that's been really where my focus has been out. So obviously I've been you know, using what I've had to hand, which is basically a standard Mora kind of bushcraft knife, right? And throughout the year, as I've been hanging around more and more people, I've been starting to see people use tools in terms of spoon carving and woodworking. And if you saw last year a video I've done with Jill Swan, a delightful lady, another spoon carving video that we've done that was really well received. Uh, when I spent two or three days with her, she was using uh, like a spoon knife and it was really nice. I was looking at it, I thought this is a really nice knife, like, where'd you get this from? And obviously, obviously I've been using very simple tools like the Mora stuff, uh, which is still you know, very good. And uh, she mentioned Lee stuff, and that's when I first heard about Lee. And um, obviously done more research and I found out that you know you work with a blacksmith, Nick Westerman, and together, which we'll t talk about in a second, but it was kind of the culmination into this tool that I was using. And I was like, I need to have one of those, man. Mm -hmm. I've really got to have one. So I spoke to Lee last year. Uh, and Lee, you know, uh, uh, very kindly took my name down for an order. And a while later, I am back now to pick up my tool set and I could not be more excited. Now, just before we kind of, I bring Lee into this kind of discussion, the reason why I decided to invest in, you know, a handcrafted, handmade tool set was because as you get more into any particular passion or hobby, be it bushcraft, crafts or whatever, you know, you start to accept the fact that you've been doing this for, you're going to be doing this for a long time. And so you feel the need, just like bushcraft, you know, once you realise you're really into it, you start investing in good quality gear. It's going to make your experience a lot better. You're going to get a much better result out of it. And green woodworking is most definitely the case, you know, the more you invest in good quality tools. Um, and some also, also, you know, something about handcrafted tool that really kind of is quite appealing. So Lee done a lot of talking haven't I, I've been, Zed Outdoors has been ramming on for about the past five minutes and Lee's just been quietly standing there looking at me, but I want to bring him on, good. I know, but I want to bring him on now, but really I've been hearing great stuff about you, about your tools, about obviously your green woodworking as well. Thanks very much. Um, so in terms of like telling the guys who are watching the video, what what's the origin, what makes it special in terms of your tools, you know, how did they come about? Well basically through my experience in using the tools I've found, you know, there are varying qualities out there and you definitely can get started off with some fairly cheap tools that will get you going and then you'll start to find you know in some cases there's areas where those tools just don't quite perform as well as you'd like them to so i you know went to the bother of seeking out blacksmiths and thankfully i had you know, a few friends at the blacksmiths and you know we've looked at potentially improving some of the designs that are out there and, and coming up with a few new ones so that's really where your your toolkit has evolved over the last sort of my three or four years of experience in playing with with tools and, and trying to work out, you know. What so this is about. this really is a culmination of many years of your own skills developing and, yeah, also and, other, and other people's. Yeah. yeah, obviously, you know, my 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 knowledge and skill set is with working with the wood. Yeah. Other people's skill set is with working with the metal that you carve the wood with, and the combination of putting our heads together has come up with, I think, mm. you know, quite a good result. Yeah. So we shall talk about that in a bit more detail. Yeah. No, that's what we'll, we'll do. So what go we're going to do now. Kit is with your kind of permission, I'm going to jump behind the camera now. And uh, what we'll do, obviously I'll kind of guide Lee through and we'll start talking about the toolkit um, in a bit more detail. So let's do that. Let me jump behind the camera. Let's go straight into the tool set. So here we have it, the tool set. <laughs> so Indeed. Lee, so do you want to start off with the actual role itself? So you very kindly, by the way, you know, Lee very kindly uh, does some extra stuff that I didn't actually ask for, but very kindly added on to, to my order. So do you want to start off with the actual tool roll itself? Well, I thought bearing in mind that you're having a few tools in the one hit, I'd, I'd make you up a little roll to keep them in. It's nothing particularly special. It's just an old wool blanket, a felted wool blanket. Um, that sort of passed its best in terms of sleeping sleeping on, but it does its job in terms of keeping your tools nice and safe and tidy. So 
what we've got is a space for a couple of extra tools if you want to add to your kit but you've got your basic you know what I would consider my sort of spoon carving kit beyond the axe obviously you already had your axe that you're quite happy with so the first tool in this armory is a straight knife it's got its own individual sheath in, made out of leather so obviously it protects you from the edge and the edge from getting damaged um, which obviously then just slots into its place in here so to begin with this, the handle on this one is ash I've, ch I've put different wood on all the handles of these just to first of all so they're easy to differentiate by the handles because the handles are a similar design so this one is ash and it's a straight blade made by Nick Westerman um, it's one of his laminated blades so it's actually a sandwich of three three steels there and what's, but, what's the added advantage of that then? Well, I think in the same way that more make a make a laminated blade, it, it, it enables you to have a, your sort of your steel of choice for the actual edge, and then a, a milder, softer steel backing that up. So you've got flexibility and strength and edge holding, and there's, there's lots of different reasons why they work. Um, but generally, it gives you the choice of what you want your edge to be made out of, and it doesn't obviously have to be the same as the rest of the blade. So, say Nick makes the makes it from scratch. So he actually laminates the steels together, and then obviously makes the blades themselves. All I've done in this case is put the handle on it, um, which is again to a design that I find comfortable and useful. It's got this little guard here, so when you're cutting towards yourself, there's just something that will come into contact with your thumb before the blade does, while you're getting used to it. And also, that you know, it, 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 for me, it gives you a bit of an indication as to where the end of the handle is, so you're not going to slip off onto the blade. And also it gives you a positive orientation of the of the handle in your hand I don't need to know I don't need to be looking at this to know which way round it is in my hand because of the way it curves here and having this this guard here and also the back of the knife the spine is very close to the uh... yeah I think it helps if the, if the spine of the knife actually runs into the spine of the handle if you like so if you've got your thumb on the transition there's not an uncomfortable ridge for your thumb to sit on basically and it just follows that line straight down through Okay, Lee, so that was your straight edge knife. And so in the process of, for example, you're going about carving a spoon. So obviously this is what you use first. Then what would you use after that then? Yeah, well, basically you're going to use your straight knife to do most of your shaping and tidying up your axe work. The next tool I use after that is the one that I've kind of been developing over the last few years, which I call a spoon scorp. It basically replaces the need to have a left and a right-handed spoon knife because you're incorporating the two blades into the one handle, basically, you know, Generically, you'll have like that as a one side and that as the other side. So you would have two tools with not a complete loop of steel. This was a concept come up with by a friend of mine called Chris Grant, a very talented blacksmith in his own right. He makes a lot of custom knives, and I approached him to make me a left-handed spoon knife. And he said, "Well, why don't we try this?" So, you know, as a commission, he made the original one for me, and this. What what you what you see here is sort of like the culmination of the development from that original prototype through to what I'm using on a daily basis today. Um, this is actually a blade that I made myself up at Nick Westerman's workshop under his tuition, um, just to go and understand the process really of you know how these blades are made and and why they work so well. So it's a really rewarding thing to do. But this is what you're going to use to to basically hollow out the bowl of the spoon in the same way that you would use a, a, you know, a standard or generic hook knife with the benefit that you know if it's not working one way you can turn it around and work the other way and it's very versatile you've got this added bit here that you can use in the bottom of deeper work say like cooks and bowls and stuff you've actually got an edge there that you can get right down deep into something and still be using that edge that wouldn't necessarily be there on say a more open sweeped hook knife so for me, this is the one, this is based on a 25mm diameter at this point and obviously then you get this curve that gets shallower as it comes into the handle. So you've got a lot of different actual curves on this blade that you can use for hollowing out your spoon and or you know, any type of hollowing work basically and it's great for roughing out, it's quite quick and efficient but also it's, you know, it's sharpened as such that you can use it for finishing cuts as well. Um, this one is what I would use for most of my roughing work and for finishing smaller spoons. 
Excellent. And what's the wood that's made from then? The handle? the handle on this one is actually a little bit of spalted beech. That's so beautiful. you can see the lovely yeah. colours in it there. This was donated to me by a friend of mine. So I thought it would make a nice, a nice little handle. So Lee, we're moving on to the daddy one now. Yeah, well, this is a fairly fairly new development, um, and this is a, basically a larger version of the tool that we've just been looking at. Again, it's got its own leather protection to protect, protect the edge. It's like a, basically a leather box. Um, the idea with this one is, I generally use this one more for finishing. It's, you can see, it's obviously bigger than the original. This one's 38 millimetres, or about an inch and a half at the widest point. And what I find it absolutely ideal for, and it's sort of its main purpose for me, was achieving finishing cuts inside eating spoons. You can see that you know, the curve of this blade suits very well the shape of the inside of, a spoon, of an eating spoon bowl. So what it enables you to do is take really light shavings and get a nice smooth finish on the interior of the bowl so it's comfortable in your mouth. Not quite so important on other spoons, but it's nice to have that nice smooth surface to you know that's when it's going in and out of your mouth. You don't want anything catchy or too too bumpy or uncomfortable. So this tool is ideal for that. It's also ideal for when you're finishing finishing bigger work, um, i.e. bowls, cooks and things. Again, you're just gonna you've got a, a much shallower curve here, so you can cut off some of the high points and achieve a smoother finish than. You, you know that you could with a, a, a more tighter radiused blade. This one again, it's got a similar design handle. This one I've made it longer because what I what I've found is at some stages in carving a spoon, if you're working with radial cleft billets, for example, I quite like to axe the crank in first, um, so it'd give me something like this to work from. So I've got this this shape, which is the basic shape of the spoon, and then I can work out where the spoon's going to sit on that and what I would actually do at this stage if I was making a run of these is to clamp this in a vise and then I can actually get both hands on the hand of this tool and kind of use it in either direction. Do you want to demonstrate that very quickly? I can do, yeah. Of course if that's we've got, okay. We've got the vise here so we can have a quick go at that. So I'm just going to hold this so it's slightly proud of the bench itself so the handle's going down into the vise, the bowl itself is standing up above so basically I'm not just going to bang into bits of a bench with this sharp blade um, and then to start with it's very light cuts just to start get the shape of the tool into the wood and it's a kind of you're turning at the same time I'm pulling this towards me so I'm kind of pulling with one hand and rotating with the other and what it enables me to do this is actually a really dry blank this is part of a part of a set I use for demonstration so it's really not green wood at all anymore it's quite seasoned hence why it's not cutting as easy as it normally would but once you've basically got the shape of the tool into the blank you can quite quickly then remove some waste from this before you cut the shape into the spoon and again you can turn it round push push away so you can get the cut out of both sides just start to clean up your axe work previously See, once the shape of the tool is actually into the wood, it quite quickly gets a nice shape. And so at this stage, that's where I'd leave it at that, and then I'd continue with my axe work to shape this and actually finish this. It just means that when I come to carve the rim of the spoon, I'm not trying to carve out the middle of the bowl at the same time. There you go, that was a big daddy. And what was the handle of that one again? Uh, the handle on this one is a piece of plum, plum wood. So again, it's got some really nice coloration to it, some nice figuring in the grain. It's absolutely stunning colour, that is. Nice, nice British hardwood. We like hard, that's what we like. <laughs> we do. So, the, the last then, the little, the little chirrup of the... Uh... Yes, your little, your little baby one. This one's got a much smaller handle on it, again, to a similar design. In this case, it's much slimmer. Um, this is again another blade by Nick Westerman 
and it's what he calls his clip point carver. It's only about an inch long, and the the, the clipped point, I the, where the spine's been cut away here, gives you a really really sharp point. Um, you've also got a nice short little blade, which is good for really close controlled cuts, like coming up and shaping the rim of a bowl. You can come in, and everything's close. You can get you know you can keep really good control over it, and use your sort of your knuckle as a reference and a bit of a guide to then sort of guide a cut. Um, the reason the handle's a lot slimmer, it's, it's big enough that you can hold it like a conventional blade because you are going to use it in, or you could be using it in sort of finishing operations, generally, generally tidying up a handle or yeah, a few finishing cuts on a spoon. It, the main, that's one of the things I use it for. The other, the other thing is when you want to start decorating handles, a lot of people will use their, their full size carving knife right. and basically choke up on it choke up on it to get the control by holding the blade itself gotcha some people will put some tape around the blade to protect their hands a bit but it's not particularly well for me it's not particularly comfortable position to be working in gotcha so I, th I found that the beauty of these if you make the handle thin enough so you can hold it kind of like a pen you can then start doing these kind of incision cuts to start removing little chips to decorate handles and such and the fine point of this blade makes that means it it goes into the wood really easily obviously you're not going to be pushing it in really deep but you can you know you can basically draw a pencil on then follow it quite easily with this blade and then come back at it from the other angle and just remove a small chip of material that gives you you know enables you to decorate your spoons with these kind of decorations this is a piece of cherry wood the handle on this and a bit of a burr in here so that's another quite attractive piece of timber so i'll try to pick out something that was a little bit different for each one for you so it's just a bit more interesting really again it's got its own little leather sheath just to protect it so you can just chuck it in your pocket or a carving bag but it's got its own little place in the roll as well so that you can keep everything together you know if you know you're going to go out carving you know, no, not just camping for the weekend you could take this specific kit to create whatever it is you fancy making while you're hey, you've done the about. custom kind of leather and sheaths for all of them haven't you yeah yeah obviously when you're making the the tool itself you can't go out and buy <laughs> something for it to fit in as well yeah. as these do so it's it, they're fairly straightforward i'm not i'm no expert on leather work but you know i've got to a standard where i can make things that protect the blades that i make so they do the job these are just finished this is veg tanned leather and these are just finished with a little bit of a mixture of linseed oil and beeswax So those were the four blades then, and then last but not least, obviously the maintenance of them. Um... Of course, yeah. Any, any, any tools like this, obviously they don't stay sharp forever, and it's important that you maintain the edges if you're going to continue to produce nice work with them. So what I've included for you here um, is a basic wood back leather strop. We've got the rough side of the leather up. You can load that up with your, your favourite polishing compound to keep your straight blades in check, and also for the outside of your, of your scorp blades. And with that, you actually provided the... I did indeed, yeah. You've got a little bit of the polishing compound that myself and, well, obviously Nick Nick put me onto this. This is the polishing compound that he uses when he's making his blades in the first place, so it's the ideal thing. This is the last sort of stage in polishing. So this is the ideal thing for maintaining those edges. Um, so you've got, a little, you've got a little block of that. You've got uh, a little rubber mat as well, haven't you? Oh yeah, you've got the... something just to just to basically roll out. To st if you're working on a, on a flat surface like this and you've got room so you can put your put your strop down you can obviously put it on your little bit of anti-slip matting load it up with some compound and then sharpen away what we will do is, is, is actually go through the techniques for sharpening. Yeah what I was going to say was guys what we decided to do we're going to do a, a part two to this where we actually sharpen all the tools but obviously it's a very it's a bit of a subtle knack to sharpening some of these so that's the um, obviously so that's the, uh, the, that's the so strop. that's the flat one you've also got here a, a round strop which is basically again a piece of leather rough side out wrapped around this ceramic rod these ceramic rods are actually available from ikea um, and they're they're brilliant you know used as a, as a, as a sharpening rod themselves they're a, fit, a really fine ceramic again um, and basically you're going to use this as the pre-stage to, to your stropping 
Gotcha. On the inner bevel of your of your curved blades. Um, you could also use it like a like a chef steel for your straight gotcha. blades if you wanted to. It's not something I generally do because I've got flat stones that I can do that with. So if I was going um, to a Star Wars reenactment party, I could be yeah, <laughs> you could. <laughs> but so what I do is I just make up these little leather covers that again you can load up with the compound and use for sharpening the in, the inner bevels on your scorps. And then just as just in case that you know you're out and about and you get a bit beyond the point where a strop's going to bring it back, I've just included you a, a selection of um, wet and dry papers that you can either wrap around the ceramic rod or I've put some adhesive on the back so you can some self adhesive tape so you can just stick them to the back of your the wood back of your strop for doing your flat blades. It's like if you happen to get a little bit of damage or a, or a problem that you can't deal you can't strop out basically when you're out and about. Excellent stuff. And last but not least, you had a, another addition. With the, oh, yes. this, this was once again another unexpected gift, you know. Indeed, uh, there was a little touch. I, obviously, I've been following you on YouTube for a little while now, and enjoying your videos. And I noticed that you've got your own little logo set up. So obviously, this is a tool that rolls up, a, a, a tool roll that rolls up to cover your stuff up. So just tuck that bit in there, and I've got my thing is obviously the fox tail and the shape of the handles and stuff so i've made a little leather fox tail but then i've decided the the fastening should be a button with your logo on it Check so that out. how cool is that i was you know if i wasn't amazed already which i was with the actual tool set itself and everything that came with it this just absolutely tipped it over the edge and this just blew me away it was a beautiful touch there lee thank you so much no problem at all. i bet the girls love you at valentine's day oh yeah <laughs> <laughs> once upon a time once upon a time but, uh, but no seriously that was an absolutely incredible incredible touch yeah not to sound like cliche but it is one of those things where you know, you, you know i'm gonna be proud to kind of use you know uh excellent uh, stuff Please kind of showing that. people and lastly but not it even gets better than that see at least full of surprises but <laughs> Just he, he goes. If, he goes. If, he goes in. If you ever get bored with your own jokes, you can hang yourself. Is it another courtesy of? Well, I'm I, little, I, put little, I put a little carrying handle somewhere to hang it up with. So I thought you better have a hook to put on your workshop wall. Just and you actually carve that hook yourself, man. How cool so is that, man? Just from a little branch crook, basically. Are you sure you're not the inspiration for IKEA itself? <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, more well, like the other way round. I think it's, there's a strong, strong influence in Sweden for this type of carving. So I think that's a lot of where it comes from these days. A lot of their designs are actually inspired by older stuff. So there you go guys, a newborn baby. Indeed. Can, can you see like the similarity there? <laughs> you know, it's like, well, it's, uh, what, 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 what should we name it? Joking? No, I'm joking. No, this is this is it, man. This is my tool set. That's it. Delightfully made uh, by Thank Lee you very much. Uh, And it, you know, once again, I don't want to sound cliche when I say this, but it's somewhat extremely special you know about handmade items obviously you have the mass commercial stuff and it has its place but it's like my jackal knife you know i have my mora etc and it's great but then the jackal knife is just in a pedigree of its own and now what you've done here sits in that same category for me you know thank you and obviously more importantly it serves a function you know it. to go out there carve some spoons improve my quality you know I'm not very good at the moment but i'll you'll get there learn. You'll yeah learn. And so it's just kind of improving on that. So like I said, you know, I want to show you that I'm very proud to kind of own this set, just like I am, you know, with, with you know, certain other items that I have. Um, this will definitely take a, a, a proud place in my selection of kit when I go outside. Um, now, the one thing we didn't touch on, and I want to do it in a separate video, is the sharpening and yes. maintenance of these. Uh, there's a kind of bit of a subtle art to how you kind of sharpen some of these tools. So what we decided to do with Lee's kind permission once again, is we're going to do that in a separate video. So make sure you subscribe to this channel to kind of find out uh, about that ch uh, that video. It won't be too long, It'll probably be the next one after this, or if not, the next two or three videos down. Uh, but we look out for that video. We have done a video where you'll sharpen the tools using this setup here, but also you can apply the same principles yourself to your own tools. Um, so please look out for that um, that video coming up soon. Um, if people want to find out about how they can acquire some of the tools what you've shown here themselves, Indeed. what would you say is the best kind of course of action for them to do? Well, thankfully I've got a good friend who's helped me set up a website at the moment. <laughs> and hope you know, they will be available on there eventually. I'm not quite ready for that yet. So for now the best place to get me is on my Facebook page which is Covert Craft. Uh, and if you message me via that, I, will, I can put your name on the list. There is a bit of a waiting list for these tools at the moment. But say, so hopefully, as I get more established, I'll get some stock yeah. up and running on the website. Yeah. But for, it, for the it, time it, being... It's in demand. Not for his looks, it's wrong. It's just... <laughs> it's just not for the looks. Right? So, but no, what we'll do is, obviously it's a needless to say, right, I'm going to put a link to Lee's uh, 
social media connections below. Please, he's just like his YouTube channel, right? I'm getting a kick up the back. Like, get, get on YouTube, man. Like, join us a lot, you know. And uh, But no, he's look forward to kind of him putting out some good stuff on YouTube. Instagram has become very, uh, very active. And also Facebook. So like I said, just message you on Facebook. Links for all of them I'll put below this video. Please do feel free to check that out. Show your support to Lee. I like to show support, you know, to, to you know, craft people in our community, wherever they may be, you know. And um, a lot of work goes into this stuff, you know. Uh, I think a lot of the time it just gets unacknowledged, you know, the craftsmanship behind this stuff. So please connect with Lee, message him via Facebook if you're interested. Uh, another reason why I'm mentioning all this is I like to support yeah, individuals like Lee. Um, I get nothing out of this, you know, apart from knowing that I've supported other people in our community, just like you supported me in my journey. So, a lot of camaraderie going on here, isn't it? You know, <laughs> we're going to come by you on the next scene, right? in your back garden. Well, done. Yeah, I know, especially this car, we need it, God. Um, but anyway. I hope you enjoyed this video. Like, I'm super, super stoked uh, to have this. Uh, thank you once again, Lee. No problem at all. I really appreciate that. Yeah, and like I said, good use. There you go. The baby's handed that to you. Now. That's it. Typical housewife. Now, isn't it? Like, I say, oh, you go. I you look after him now. I look after him. Feed him on time. Change his nappy. But no, it's. Uh, I'm very proud of this. You're going to see this obviously in upcoming videos where I'm going to be using it a lot more. Look out for the video where we're going to talk about the sharpening. Please connect with Lee. Links down below if you're interested in even in just inquiring. Uh, about the tool sets, etc. Connect with Lee via Facebook. He'll send you more information. And that is it. So, as always, hope you enjoyed this video. Subscribe if you haven't done so already. There's a link on the top right hand corner of the screen. Click on that, you'll be able to subscribe to this channel to find out more updates. Got any comments and questions, feedback, let me know. And until the next time, as always, this is Zed from Zed Outdoors and Lee Stoffer. Thank you very much, Zed. It's been a pleasure. And until the next time, take care, my friends. Peace out. Take care.